Well, hello everybody, and what are we up to today? Well, this is going to be a complete flight in virtual reality, VR, using my Oculus Rift. We'll be flying the Bell 412, and it will be an FS economy flight. So, we're going to be flying from, oh, excuse me here. Uh, let's see, we're going to be flying from uh, El Paso, and then we're going to be going to uh, Coppola Creek Ranch, Presidio, Texas, and we're going to have some passengers that we're going to deliver there, and then from there, we're going to go to Lajita's Field, Lajita Field, Texas, and uh, the whole thing's you know less than 200 miles and it's gonna make us about oh um, right at four thousand dollars not a lot of money but it's relatively short flight uh, first part of it will be about 40 minutes long and uh, second half is about 144 so an hour and 44 minutes. I'll get it right. You know me. Old Bug Eater 64. So let's get in the helicopter and get things going. Okay, this is attempt number one. So let's see if uh, it's very early morning. Um, this is what I really wanted was a, a, an early morning flight so we could uh, kind of watch the sunrise and see some city lights and so on so and uh, we're in VR so I do have some head movement right now let's see about getting this bird started so the batteries are on inverters go on and then anti-collision lights Alrighty, so with that, let's get some fuel turned on. And in VR, I prefer using my mouse for my click points instead of the uh, uh, VR controller, hand controller. Uh, it usually works, for me, it works a little bit better. But sometimes, uh, as, as you can see, uh, try it kind of goes through what I'm trying to click. So sometimes it, it gets a little bit difficult. So it looks like we're all set up here. Let's go ahead and check the throttle. Alright. And we are presently at uh, El Paso International. We have taken care of the remove before flight items. So let's start engine one. Engine one is spooling nicely. We'll let it settle down. Yeah, we can go ahead and start engine two. generators to turn on.
<clears throat> so let's get the flight plan going here. This is sometimes the click area on the uh, Garmin gets a little bit touchy. As you can see, uh, my little click point seems to disappear sometimes instead of and that one arrow I needed, that one, was playing hard to get. So I pre-programmed it, so let's see if I get it to work. And we click to start, and system crash. Okay, it did not like that. So what we're doing here is we're starting effort number two. We've got the aircraft running and configured. Now we're going to try the flight plan again. And after the, the last update it did not like uh, my old saved flight plans. Um, I read the message it gave me but I didn't understand it. But something about it didn't like that I'd made the flight plan on on an older, or I'd saved it in an older older format. So here we go. We're gonna come down and we're gonna get the flight plan implemented. There we go. Flight plan different. A rack. Okay. So it still doesn't like that one, but let's see if it accepts it now. At least that time it didn't crash to system. Okay. We are ready for takeoff. In attempt number two. And in this attempt, when I reloaded the sim, you see the lines? Those are the tracks of every single aircraft moving in the sky or on the airport. I don't know why it happened, but it did. And it's actually kind of pretty. The sun was coming up, and it was looking so pretty. But it sure destroys your immersion factor. It almost looks like tack view type tracks. It's a, just unbelievable. Thank you for your attention. It's time to get you ready for takeoff. We know you have lots of choices. So thanks for choosing American. We're happy to be your airline. Now if you'll just follow along with me, we'll be on our way. Aboard. So, we there you have here, that. Safety instructions. First things first, let's buckle those Jeez. belts. Insert the metal end into the buckle and pull the strap to tighten. To open, simply lift. got three lift lines of track. And remember, seatbelts should be That's even on my aircraft, so. Just in case of unexpected turbulence. That was a good one. Way, make sure your seat is up. All electronic devices are put away and your tray table is stowed. If you have a carry-on, push it all the way under the seat in front of you. If it won't fit, place it in the overhead position. 
Okay, so pack to start it, and of course, you know, by now it's morning. The sun's risen. But this was a three third attempt, and hopefully, as they say, three times the charm. Set our airspeed to start with. And so now ITT. So the autopilot is in operation now. Swing over El Paso. It doesn't look like it's, we're heading in the right direction, but the nav, or the Garmin, doesn't look like there's a purple track heading to where, you know, I think we're heading in the right direction, but it didn't, uh, well, it's not the machine's fault, it's the pilot's error. I didn't set the right flight plan. So, as we look into the morning light, try to get things figured. and set this up and then what I'll do is just gonna yeah the uh, the nav is not if you notice on the front panel it's not green the heading indicator is green and we had the proper heading set up to go where we wanted to go so what I need to do is I'm gonna change the flight plan and you can't see what I'm doing because I'm doing when I click on the main panel for the Garmin to come up, it doesn't show up in VR. Uh, I wish it did. It would be so, so much nicer. But that's one of the problems with VR, is that some of these panels just don't show up. The uh, perfect example of that is the GTN 750, which is not VR compatible. Not for the pop-up. So, um, what I did did was is I went in and 
looked at some things and so now I'm going to try and set up the flight plan and then we'll switch it over which when I do that um, clear that Now we go down to that and then we click on that top part, highlight it, move the step down to our pre-planned flight plan, get the message again, and now I can see the lines. So it's still showing El Paso as the uh, programmed leg of the flight plan so yeah what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let the uh, autopilot fly us right back over uh, and why because we're not that far away and it's just the easiest thing to do hold our altitude because it's right there instead of going through the hassle of trying to get it to start with uh, speed to about 107. Yeah, 412 could definitely fly faster than that, but at the same time, About 110 is about the maximum it likes to cruise at. All right, let's see if we can move some things I can't do with my mouse. So I still have usually one, one controller with me, so I can move this so it's up out of the way. I can look at it when I want it, but I really kind of want it out of the way. Okay, there we go. Then I can set the uh, hand controller to the side. And now when I look out the side window, my map in the way. Okay, so now we are mo moving to our travel heading. So it has taken a little while to get everything configured and running exactly the way we want it to and the way it should. Good. Okay, so with that, we've got a little over, you know, 100, 
10 miles, something like that. So, and here we are. We are approaching our first landing. Now, in this case, all it is is a runway or a couple runways. Uh, there's not no buildings here, nothing at all. So, uh, it's right in front of us. And we'll uh, make our first stop. We're going to drop off, uh, I think, two passengers. We'll top off our tanks. And then we'll head off on the final leg. This first leg nets us uh, just almost $2,000 in FS economy, as will the final leg. But as you can see, it's just uh, a couple gravel, or I think they're gravel runways. There's no markings on them. VR makes it so much more enjoyable uh, flying a helicopter, especially because you got this great depth of field and uh, so in the Oculus, it, it really is nice. <coughs> Yeah, my Oculus Rift is an older headset, uh, but it's still working very well. And, uh, might not have the bells and whistles uh, as some of them do nowadays, but uh, what I'm flying is, you know, they talk about the screen door effect. And to be honest, once I'm in it for a couple minutes, I really don't notice it. So let's set it down. Flight attendants, disarm doors. And we are down, so we're going to drop Ladies off the passengers. Welcome to our destination. For your safety and comfort, please remain seated until the captain turns off the fasten seatbelt sign. This will indicate that we have parked at the gate and it is safe to move around in the aircraft. Please check around gate. your seat, including under your seat, as well as your seat pockets for any personal belongings. Please take care when opening the overhead lockers as heavy articles may have shifted during the flight. If you require deplaning assistance, please remain in your seat until all other passengers have disembarked the aircraft. One of our crew members will then be happy to assist you. On behalf of our entire crew, I'd like to thank you for joining us today on our flight and we hope to see you again. Very good, so we're going to finish the flight, and then we'll restart the flight, or start the new flight for the new leg, and be on our way. So let's get going. So we refueled. Get engine 
two started up again. <laughs> Takeoff trim is set. Let's get going. So, here we are, approaching our final leg, or approaching our final destination. down on the ground, get our passengers gone, and get ourselves a cup of coffee, and call it a day for this flight. Another successful mission for Air America Duet in our helicopter charter service. to lose altitude and slow down. We're doing about 60 knots now. Runway directly in front of us and the hangar area and parking area is just to our right.
we'll continue to lose altitude. We're almost at a hover, not quite. Doing less than 20 knots forward speed. Just moved on down to the parking area now. Keep an eye out for that fuel truck that's moving on the tarmac there. Keep him out of the way. Touch the skid down there. That's all right. We can deal with it. We're going to move over here to the heat. helicopter pad area. You can tell my landing <coughs> system isn't set up for helicopters. Poor and early flare. Oh well. And we are here safely. Down, everything's looking good. We'll go ahead and shut the helicopter down. Get paid for our mission and get coffee. interesting day with the uh, VR had some issues there uh, not necessarily with the VR but with uh, one of the renderings uh, when I tried to start the flight and uh, as you can see because I threw it in in there to let you see what was going on I suddenly had trails for every aircraft that was on the ground in the air moving there were uh, trail lines where that came from I don't know so so, needless to say, I had to restart the, the sim, and uh, everything worked fine. So, I hope you did enjoy it. It was a lot of fun doing it. I l love flying in VR. Uh, I'm still working on how to best do the uh, videoing. And, uh, of course, uh, the Oculus Mirror really helps. Because that way you can at least see the flight. You're not seeing it the way I am in 3D. 
uh, with depth and field and it really helps when you're flying a helicopter especially but uh, you know at least uh, I'm able to make some videos and hopefully you'll enjoy them like this one if you did enjoy it please click the like button and if you didn't click the don't like button and uh, if you'd like to be notified when I make videos and post another one please ring that little bell next to the subscribe button and you'll be notified when that uh, next video comes up so anyway until next time this is bug eater 64 sure hope you have a great week and weekend and we will see you very soon and as always safe flying